Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to conduct a t-test using Microsoft Excel. I will be using the data analysis tool pack to conduct this t-test. And you can find that in the data ribbon all the way to the right menu selection there is data analysis. If you do not have that, it doesn't show up in the data ribbon, I just go to File, Options, Add-ins, Select Analysis Tool Pack. Down here it says Excel Add-ins. Just click Go. And mine, of course, is already checked off, but you'll want to check that off. And then click OK. And you'll have access to that. So we'll be testing this data that I have here on the right. I have an independent variable at two levels. Uh, one is Control, and the other is Treatment. And there's 20 participants in each uh, level of the independent variable group. And then we have a post test that contains some scores. And let's just say the scores are for a depression inventory and a lower score indicates lower severity of depressive symptoms. So we want to use a t-test to see if the post test scores for the control group are statistically significantly different than the post-test scores for the treatment group. And of course, we would hope that they were, and we'd also hope that the treatment group had lower scores. So if we look at the data analysis dialog, click on data analysis, and you'll see the analysis tools dialog show up here. You can see there's a variety of statistics that can be run from Excel. And if you look at the options for t-test, you have the t-test paired, then you have uh, two sample assuming equal variances, and then t-test two sample assuming unequal variances. Well, just by looking at our data, we do not know if we have equal variances or unequal variances. So we need to run a test first to determine which t-test we should use, the equal variances assumed or the unequal variances assumed. So if we move up here a little bit, we'll see F test to sample for variances. This is the uh, test we want to conduct to determine if we have equal or unequal variances. So select that and click OK. And then you can see in this dialog box for this test, it asks for a variable range 1. So we're going to select all the post test scores for the control group. So that'll be cell B2 down to cell B21. And then for variable 2, we want to select all the scores in the treatment group, which will be B22 through B41. And we're going to leave the alpha set at 0.05 or 5%. And then for output range, I'm going to select cell D2 and click OK. So you can see here we have variable 1, of course that's the control group, and variable 2, that's the treatment group. It displays the means, the variance for each one of the variables, of course the observations which we know are 20, the degrees of freedom, the F value, and down here the F critical one tail but the value that we're interested in is the p-value one tail. So this, this one here. And we want to evaluate its value compared to the p-value of 0 0.05, the alpha. And you can see it's 0.17, so it's greater than 0 0.05. So we will accept the null hypothesis that we have equal variances. If this value were to be below 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis that the variances are equal and assume unequal variances. So now that we know that we're going to assume equal variances, we can select the correct t-test. So go back to the data ribbon and data analysis, and we'll select two sample 
t-test two sample assuming equal variances. Click OK. And very similar to the way we arranged the data for the f-test two sample for variances, we will put the control group in the one range, the variable one range, and then for variable two range, that'll be the treatment group. And we're going to leave the alpha set at 0 0.05, and I'm going to move the output range to just below uh, this other, these other test results, say D13, and click OK. So you can see there is uh, some of the same data. You have the mean for variable one, which is the control group, and the mean for variable two, which is the treatment group. And you can see that the, the mean for the treatment group is lower than the mean for the control group. And of course, we have the variance, the observations. But where I want to draw your attention is down here toward the bottom. We're looking for the P2 tail value. So we must remember that the t-test tests the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the means of the control group and the treatment group. And we see here that the p-value is 0 0.007, so it is below 0 0.05. So we will reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the means between the control and treatment group, and we will assume that there is a difference, there is a statistically significant difference between the means of the control group and the means of the treatment group. And of course, we can see the direction up here, as I mentioned before, 48.65 uh, was the mean for the control group, and 42.3, a lower value, was the mean for the treatment group. So we can see there was improvement. The treatment group fared better in terms of depressive symptoms than did the control group. And that difference was statistically significant. Sometimes it's easier if we convert this to a percentage. So we go to the Home tab, click Percent. So there's only a 0.79% chance, a less than 1% chance, that we would observe these differences between the control group and the treatment group due to random error alone. So moving back up to the F-Test 2 sample for variances, if this P1 tail value had been below 0 0.05, we would have run the t-test assuming unequal variances. So going back to the data ribbon, data analysis, uh, this is the analysis that we conducted, two sample assuming equal variances. We would have conducted the two sample assuming unequal variances. So equal variances would be if this p-value were greater than 0 0.05, and unequal variances if this value were less than 0 0.05. And of course, in this case, the value was greater than 0 0.05 at 0.17. So we used the equal variances assumption. I hope this video on conducting a t-test in Excel was helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.